It looks as though we're going to be locked down for a few more weeks yet. I want to make sure that all of you continue training throughout this third lockdown. It's too easy to make excuses that you don't have all the equipment or all of the space and therefore to miss sessions or to miss an entire month of training. So I'm going to go through how we can fit the programming around the space or how you can adapt the programming around the space and equipment you have. Over the next few days, I'll be posting out the opportunity for you to rent equipment once more. Everyone will be able to rent a single dumbbell or kettlebell which is essential for our training throughout the lockdown because a lot of the stuff we'll do will be with that single dumbbell or kettlebell. I also advise you to get yourself a form of resistance band. A lighter one is actually better because you can adapt it. You can make it tighter and shorter if you need to. Um, something that's too heavy actually is going to make it more challenging. You can get these from Amazon. I think they're about a tenner. Amazon. We do have some you can borrow, but obviously we're not sure we've got enough for everyone to borrow. So if you can get your own, and it's quite good to have these at home because they're really good for just basic accessory work. For example, like bicep curls, pull aparts, tricep extensions, all those little exercises uh, and some glute work as well that you need to add into your training or you can add into your training to get a little bit of faster adaptation. If you've got that equipment there, then all of the program will be designed around that equipment. One thing I am going to do with the programming this time around is that we have obviously time priority, which is where you do an AMRAP. Let's say it's 10 minutes to do as many rounds as possible. And that way, if you've got too light a weight for that uh, workout, you could just you just end up doing more, more rounds. So you, you still get uh, a workout from that, a challenging workout from that. You just end up moving faster than someone who has a heavier weight for that workout. And I'll talk about how in each of the programming sessions, how you can adapt it to fit that kind of weight you have. The other thing that we're going to do is if we have a task priority workout, in other words, if you have a workout that is complete five rounds of time with a certain movement, I will add in a minimum time cap into that workout if you go too light. So in other words, if that workout is supposed to be within the range of about 12 to 20 minutes and you finish it at eight minutes, then you will work until you reach the 12 minute mark to make sure you're getting enough challenge and enough work from that training session so that we can adapt those and the other thing we're going to do is obviously you can change the number of reps you do depending on how challenging that single implement feels for that worker obviously those of you who have barbells uh, and additional equipment you can adapt the workout to use those barbells as well but it's a good opportunity actually during this four maybe six week period that we're locked down for we're not sure as yet how long it's going to be um, I'm filming this on Monday, so the announcement's on Wednesday. But they probably won't tell us the date then anyway. Um, it's actually quite a good way to get away from that barbell and just train those single limb exercises for a month. There's no harm in doing that for a period of time. But like I say, if you do have a barbell and you want to do some stuff with that, then feel free to adapt the programming to use a barbell as well. You can just look at what the stimulus is. I might say that the stimulus should be, you know, go unbroken through all of those reps, it should feel moderately heavy. I just adapt the barbell to, to fit that. The couple of exercises or two or three exercises that can be challenging to perform at home and we can't replace um, would be pull-ups would be one of those. So what I've done here is if you have a TRX or a suspension trainer or a set of rings, Anything you can pull from, then use that as your replacement, use ring rows. You can get a pull-up bar. They're not too expensive as well. You could get one of those. I'm, I'm sure there's some still available somewhere online, hopefully. Um, the other alternative is to either get a bit of rope or I've just got a towel here. And all I've done, this is a short towel. I've actually got two towels tied together. I've just tied a... Uh, an ugly knot to tie these two towels together to make it a bit longer. If you've got a big beach towel, that's going to be much better for this one because it's going to be longer. You just hook it over the door. Make sure that you hook it over a door that closes towards you, all right? Because then every time you pull on this towel or this bit of rope or whatever you're going to use to attach in here, every time you pull on that, 
the door is closing and it's getting tighter on there. So there's no opportunity for it to come loose. But you need to still be aware that that door can move. If you can get the door to close around it, so if you could tie the knot and this door is too tight to me to slip the knot, um, so slip the towel through that crack in the door, then obviously close that door. Uh, make sure that anyone else in the house knows that you're using that though before they open it or try and open it while you're doing pull-ups. But then we can do our rowing, our pulling exercise by grabbing that towel here, making sure before you start any movement that it's secure. We don't want to see any zoom fails. Get that nice tight body position there. Get my feet, for me to make it challenging as possible, to get my feet as close to the door as I can. And I'm going to pull. Squeeze my shoulder blades tight. <sighs> and you can actually make this as challenging as you like by doing it under control. If I make it like this and start flinging myself, obviously it's much easier. So I'm going to make sure I'm doing it under control, forward and back. <sighs> really focusing on squeezing those back muscles. And when you have that, that means that anytime there's pull up, ring rows, anything like that, you can adapt that and fit that into your training. And it may be that you adapt the number of reps or you slightly adapt the time and the tension. So in other words, you see how I was doing those slowly, you could maybe go even slower still to get the same stimulus you would get from having pull-ups. It's a really good solution in your training. The other movements we're going to look at for limited space is double unders. It's an easy option in the summer to give you double unders because you just go outside into any kind of garden space if you have it or a car park or whatever and you can do your double unders. But in the winter time when it may not be ideal to be outside, dark, cold, icy, boggy if your garden's like that, then we're going to go inside and I would suggest you replace it with penguin claps. It's going to give you an almost identical stimulus to a double under in terms of your cardiovascular output. The only thing you're going to lack is a slight bit of coordination of that rope, but the timing side of things is a really good way of developing your double unders. And the number of people I know that can only do a very limited number of penguin claps uh, is numerous. And if you're trying to do, let's say you can do 20 penguin claps, well, you can't expect to do more double unders than penguin claps because you're just, you've taken out one level of complexity um, and you're still limited by your capacity and your ability to coordinate. So remember a penguin clap, really, really important if you're doing this, it's not just a random jump and clap. You should hear, and hopefully you'll hear on the microphone, the sound of me, uh, two taps as I'm in the air and then my landing. Could you hear in the middle? I slightly lost the timing. That's where you need to be working on that timing throughout. Make sure it becomes that flowing motion and not. Okay, because obviously if you're skipping, they wouldn't happen. So we want to keep that coordination going. So penguin claps are a direct replacement for your double under uh, capacity. So work on that. Those of you that find that for some reason easier than double unders, you need to jump higher. You're just probably not jumping high enough to get that same stimulus. You maybe can get away with tapping quicker when you've got that penguin clap. So if you find penguin claps easier than double unders, make sure those jumps have a purpose and intent to it. Running is another one that can be difficult for people if you're in a flat or it's just dark. Again, all the conditions for double unders could apply to running as well. Um, so what I want to do for running is to turn it into an AMRAP. And think of your runs in terms of um, the time spent. So every 100 meters when you're running is going to count for 30 seconds. You generally are running 200, 400, you know, 800 meters. So 100 meters is 30 seconds, 100 meters is one minute, 400 meters is two minutes, etc. Etc. And we're going to do an AMRAP of four 
movements. These four movements are going to be as follows. The first one is a running drill called the figure four drill. And ideally, you will do this with your back close to the wall, about a sort of um, a fist. Your butt is about a fist from the wall here. We want to be in a position where we can bring, let me do this right here, we can bring, hope you can see this here, your ankle to your knee underneath your hip. This is the figure four pose that we work on in our pose running drills. And it's the optimum position for you to get good running technique. From here, we're going to obviously fall forward and land with our ankle underneath our hip here. So we're not getting that leg in front when we're landing, which is going to give that jarring effect. So we're going to use an opportunity here to work on our running technique. So we're going to do 15 seconds of this. In any, any AMRAP we're going to do is 15 seconds of this. So from here, you're going to go this side and this side. We're not going to go slow like this though. I'm just demonstrating myself switching legs. And the reason we're close to the wall is because if I bring my leg back too far like this, and that kind of cycling motion, then you're going to clip the wall. So we're going to do there. Switch, 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 switch. So 15 seconds, figure four pose. A great opportunity to work on your technique. But we can't just do one exercise for four, eight minutes. It's going to be absolutely mind-numbing. So we're going to do 15 seconds of that. 15 seconds of jumping jacks. All right, so. And then we're going to do 15 seconds of high knees. And then 15 seconds of butt figures. And then back to your running technique. And so on and so forth. It means you will have to have a timer to hand if you are doing running indoors. But if you're doing 15, 15 jumping jacks, 15 high knees, 15 butt kickers, or 15 seconds, I should say, not 15, 15 seconds of each of those, that's one minute gone. So in a 100 meter run, you're just gonna do your wall drill and your jumping jacks. Anything else that's more than that, 200, 400, 600, all of those, it's gonna be those rounds. So each, each one of those is a one minute round, the equivalent of a 200 meter run. I think it's a nice way to mix up um, your training. The other option you can have as well, which I quite like, is maybe taking out the high knees and hopping in, hopping in some A skips instead. Again, it's going to have that same similar stimulus to it. So if you maybe wanted to mix it up one time, rather than doing your high knees, you can add in some A skips on the spot. Just a great way to still have that same feeling of running on that same training stimulus, but not be bored. You know, before I think we did just jumping jacks for a million hours. We won't be doing that this time. We'll be mixing it up a little bit. Um, with rowing, what we're going to do is, what we can do is an opportunity here uh, to mix it up again, is we can cross the band like so. And we can perform some sumo deadlift high pulls. If you need to make your band shorter, make it more challenging. We would say the technique for that is going to be band below the knees, pulling up to the chest. So we're getting that same motion you get on a rower but just in a vertical plane. You can do that with a barbell as well. You can do it with a kettlebell um, or a dumbbell as an alternative. It's just a lot of times those of you that have dumbbells, it's a little bit small and maybe a bit light for that, but very similar stimulus to do that with your dumbbell. Alternatively, with your kettlebell as well. In any of those, are a great option and generally we would use one rep for one calorie. That's how CrossFit used to do that many years ago, back in the early days of CrossFit where concept two rowers were not commonplace 
and people were all training in their garages. Um, that would be they go on CrossFit.com and they see a workout and there'll be a conversion into uh, sumo deadlift high pull because it is very, very similar in its stimulus to um, rowing. So there's our basics. So all you need equipment wise is what you're going to borrow from us. I suggest you purchase your own resistance band, but obviously you can borrow ours if you don't. Those of you that don't have them, please come and borrow one if you have to. But like I say, you've got a few days now, so if you can pop on Amazon and pick up one, that would be preferable because we may not have enough bands for everyone. In fact, we definitely have enough bands for 100 people. Um, and then set yourself something up to a door frame, like so, that you can pull to. You may also check out my other video if you haven't got this towel behind a door, you haven't got a door to hand, for example, you live in an open plan space, then please check out my other video because I had some other options for you as well. Um, one of those being getting a broom handle across the back of two chairs. So check out my pull up video. Um, it's on the CrossFit Shield and YouTube channel. I'll put a link on here as well, just in case you haven't seen that. The other alternative is you just, you get your resistance band and you perform some rows. Um, you're gonna to need to make this band as short as possible to make it <sighs> that same challenge, but even doing that, you're going to get that motion of pulling because that's the one thing, body weight stuff, you haven't got something to hang from that is challenging to train at home. Everything else, we can get a great workout from this limited equipment, this limited space. I'm in a space here that is probably just over a meter wide and a meter long. And I would expect to be able to do most of my work here. Probably need two meters, I suppose, if you're gonna do some burpees in the room as well. But I think even the smallest box room, there should be enough space for you to do this. Um, hope this helps. Like I say, the programming is going to be all body weight up until Monday coming up. So Monday, the 4th of January, so no rush to get it from before then. I'll be posting something about how you can pick up the equipment. It won't be today. Uh, it won't actually be until the announcement is made till we've got confirmation, just in case there's some kind of flip-flop from Boris and he decides that gyms are gonna open. Um, I think it's highly unlikely, but I wanna make sure that before we start renting out all the equipment, we are definitely going to be closed. So once we have that announcement, I will then post the times when you can come and collect your equipment and the spreadsheet will come back up as well. So you can do that. Good luck guys. Let's push forward for this month. Let's not use this month as an excuse to lose our fitness. Let's try and keep increasing our fitness during this time. I know that during lockdown one, especially we saw some people get some real improvements to their fitness. Um, the same equipment rules apply as well as you're doing the um, work your weaknesses programs on top of what we're doing here. You just need um, what I prescribed there for you. Uh, the other option as well is with the pull-ups is you could, if you are able to do pull-ups, you could do them from the top of the door frame, like so um, here, a little fingernail one. Just make sure, first of all, I think the door frame is pretty good. Um, so hopefully Andy's installed a decent one here. My, you, I use my fingers on the outside point here, so it's pressing down on the vertical struts as well, so I'm not just pulling and re relying on that there, like so. But obviously that's a lot more challenging because it's super strict and you're just relying on fingertip strength for your pull-ups. Um, but that's another option. Anyway, if you've got any questions about what to do during the lockdown, then please drop me a note in the comments below or drop me a, uh, a message via email and we're happy to help you go. Soon to be announced as well is our nutrition challenge, which we're going to run during this next lockdown in addition. Thanks guys.